Okay, we're going to talk about the file manager screen from the when you log on to the program um, you can go directly to the file management screen from this button here. You can also go to it at any screen uh, virtually any screen is going to have these four buttons on it. The home button which we've seen already the loss notice button here the file manager button which is where we are now and then the report button or reporter button which is where you generate the reports okay we've got five dummy uh, demonstration files set up here uh, each one's a little different the first one's a commercial loss with three locations and three buildings in two locations actually the second one is a rental property where the insured and loss uh, insured's address loss location are different. The third is a, uh, a claimant third party uh, file. Um, the fourth is a flood loss and the fifth is a just a standard hail damage claim with minor interior water damage. Okay, uh, what we would do, and I'm just going to follow one of these that's already been created. We'll take this one, final one. We can. It's the same process whether you're creating a new file and want to uh, navigate to it here or whether you want to uh, go to one that's already been set up. Select the row and then click the loss notice button. It brings you here. Enter the insurance information, claim information, policy information, the rest of the standard information that shows up on a um, loss notice. Uh, if the insurer does not show up in your your uh, list here, you click the insurer button and it will take you over to the business entity file where you can enter a new um, insurer by clicking the plus button it will create a new business entity. You fill out the information, the type it is, whether insurer, agent, adjuster, etc. Branch office, home office, as applies. Uh, entity ID is optional. It doesn't interact with the processing in any way uh, at this time. So we'll go back to this to our loss. Um, each of the dates has a drop-down calendar for selection which you can use if you like. Uh, there's preset estimate, I mean uh, cause of loss which you can add to if you like by clicking the edit button. It will bring up a little dialog and you can go down and enter, change these or enter whatever you like other additional causes of loss here. Click OK and it will show up. In a case like this you'd have to actually enter it before it would show up in the list. Uh, similar on homeowners policy, uh, dwelling policy, various policy lines. One thing I will want to mention is these following uh, six items should not be removed because they interact with the program under certain conditions. When you've got multiple loss locations and buildings, they are used for um, setting up the loss notice. So you would select one of these, whether the building, the coverage was uh, sorted by location or building, etc. Um, there's also a button here where we can go and look at policy forms. Here we've got a commercial policy or we can uh, look at others. We can add to this list if you like. Uh, as you get forms, just uh, uh, PDFs, just click other, enter the information and then insert the uh, information down below. And then you can look at the list 
of the policies here. We'll go back to the loss notice, though, and finish that. Uh, enter information on the insured. If the insured is uh, address, as shown here, is the same as the loss location, then you would put click copy to location once you've entered this information. Enter that first. I want to select the type of uh, insured it is, whether personal or a company, etc. Then you go to the law, uh, location information. This is essentially uh, the same as the last if it's the if if there's no uh, separate location. In other words, if the insured's address and the lost location are the same, this information will already be filled out by click clicking here, as just mentioned. Um, and we'll see this. We'll go back to the multiple location loss in a minute. But if you've got one of those and you want to enter an ID for the location and one for the building ID. If there are two buildings on one location, it's best to still go on and enter a location ID, even though it's the same on both of them. Enter the building ID, then you click the, the uh, plus button up here to set up a new loss location for the second building and enter it, even though the address would be the same. It's a separate building. And then once that's done, you click the coverage button. It takes you over here and you enter the um, coverage amounts. Uh, policy forms down below. Once again, we've got our input prompts, which show the sequence to be followed in entering this information. And um, obviously, not every uh, item that you need to fill in is indicated here. It's just the overall uh, general uh, view. Uh, we've got for the item that's preset on the the uh, six uh, new, uh, alpha designations for homeowners policy, but it can be changed at the edit button. The value button here, the, the uh, coverage is either RC or settled on an RC or ACV basis. Normally, those are the only two options we have there. Coinsurance is manually entered, and then the the coverage um, for the claim. This will show um, is is uh, entered automatically once the item is entered here. Then, if it's involved in the claim, you'll want to click uh, yes here. Reserves can be entered later on a different screen when you're at the actually at the uh, loss location, but it will show up back here in addition to a couple of other places. Enter information about the mortgage. Mortgagee, there's a place to do that on the location info. Uh, same data entered here will show up there. Uh, you can edit this if you've got some standard mortgage companies that you use. Run across a lot, they can be entered here, or you can enter none or not applicable. If, for instance, it's a contents loss. So we go, we enter coverage information as just discussed. We click the location map, and that's going to take us to a, a Google map to show where it's located. Uh, this operates on the iPad as well. Go back to the location. There's also a place for miscellaneous uh, loss information, which is standard on most uh, loss notices, place to enter the agent, which is similar to entering the insurance company. You've got a drop-down menu, which will have your options. You can then enter other, or you can go to the agent, go to the uh, business entity file here, just as we did for insurer before, and enter that information. Also, for the adjuster company, we've got a place for that. All you need to, if, if your information is entered in the uh, entity table as here, then it will automatically be entered in the uh, fields below. All the rest of this information enters automatically from the business entity. For instance, we could change this, and you see all the uh, data changes. 
So we got, if this was a, a third party claim, it's similar to the insured, we come here, click this button, a, a new uh, record would be created and we'd enter the information about the claimant. In this case, we don't have one, we'll just click this and it gives us the option to delete. So that's the process in filling out the loss notice. Once that's been done, uh, we can go back to the file manager and view it. It should be mentioned that Abacus Die is set up so that if you have an electronic version of the loss notice in the form of a spreadsheet or if someone uh, uh, had a file, uh, an Abacus file, man, uh, file manager version or adjuster company version where they entered the loss notices at a central site, they could then be uh, emailed or electronically submitted to the individual adjuster who can uh, import them here, uh, avoiding all of this entry uh, time. We'll go back to our file manager screen here. I do want to show the multiple situation where we've got multiple um, loss notices. So we'll take Amalgamated Corporation of America Junior, come over here and we see one insured, but when we go to the loss location, we see we've got three different loss locations. Two locations actually, with one with two buildings, and the third has uh, is a different location with a, a third building. So if we click coverage here, it's going to take us over and we see the coverage amounts on the first building. Go back and the second building back again we go to the third building and there's the coverage information uh, so the location map will be specific for whatever the coverage uh, whatever the location is down below here uh, one other item we'll look at bittersweet where we've got two insureds We've got a couple of insurers. One's a, a company and then a principal in the company is also insured. So uh, the loss location is yet again another place because it's a rental property. Um, as shown here. Okay, that's it for the loss notice. Uh, we're going to take now a break and then we'll look at how a uh, one of these files is worked up.